Good news, I got my new controller in the mail. Uh, finally, I can start working on my 15 cell setup. Uh, this controller is a 48 volt, uh, 2000 watt. It's got tons of these extra unnecessary leads, but the one good thing I found out about it is it has cruise control built into it. So I could put a switch on my handlebar and have cruise. Let's see how that works. I'm going to cut off all these connections I don't need and I brought my bike back up here and I'm going to pull this little small controller off and see what this thing can do. Alright, so I pulled the old controller off. I have the new one on and temped out with electrical tape. I have all my connections done. I even threw on this uh, cheesy rear rack and I got my battery in there. And I'm going to take it for a spin. I actually ran out of zip ties so as you can see I'm using electrical tape. So if this thing works and it rides, I'm actually going to go to the store and get some zip ties on it. Okay, so just to make sure I don't smoke the controller, I have a 15 cell battery pack right here. And all the cells are pretty much almost dead. They're all at like 3.8, 3.9. So the max voltage is going to be under the 63 volt mark. Alright, I hooked my turning watt meter up to it just to make sure that we were in the voltage range we needed. And as you can see, we're at 57.7 volts. Alright, so I plugged it in and the battery gave a big pop, like always, charging up the capacitors, and I found out it did nothing. So I looked at the wiring diagram again, and I found out that I had the smaller positive wire that acts as an on-off switch. So I hooked that up with my positive as well, and that gave me power to my motor. Now the next thing I found out is I touched the throttle once, and I found out that my hall combinations were wrong. I hooked it all up color for color because it's a Chinese controller and it's a Chinese motor so I figured it would work. Evidently not. Okay so switching the blue and green on the halls actually made my problem worse. The motor doesn't spin anymore and it's back to the same problem where it just kind of groans and stutters. Uh, you want to be careful when you're doing this. You don't want to throttle too much. You just want to touch the throttle and if it doesn't spin and spin quietly you, you have a problem. So let's go back to troubleshooting and see if we can get the thing worked out. Alright, with this combination, uh, every color on my hall is different. And it actually spins, and it doesn't make a groaning noise, but it spins backwards. <laughs> and actually my pedal just hit me in the shin, and it hurt really bad. But, uh, so now I'm thinking I have my halls correct. Alright, I've tried like every combination. <laughs> I'm starting to give up hope here. Uh, the only thing I can do is make it spin backwards. I can't get it to spin forward. I wonder if there's a reverse feature on this controller. I guess I'm going to have to do some research to find out if that's what's going on. Jeez, I just plugged this little white jumper in and plugged in my battery. And uh, the second I touched the throttle, it like hesitated. And then my bike just started going nuts and it rode a wheelie up the wall. And I had to pick the thing up with one hand and try to disconnect my Anderson. And the bike almost ran me over. Not cool at all. I don't even know what that feature does, but I'm scared to even plug it in again. It says it's a self-learning feature. But for some odd reason, the motor span in the right direction, and it rode up the wall. <laughs> so I don't know what's going on yet, but this controller is kind of weird. God, this controller is fucking dangerous, man. I just plugged that thing in again with the rear wheel off the ground, and it just completely snapped my aluminum kickstand off the bike. My pedal spun backwards, cut my leg up. I'm going to unplug this wire and never plug it in again. That was awful. It just had a 20 amp load. thing went backwards. Completely ruined my favorite kickstand. Just sheared it right off. Look at that. <laughs> oh my god. Now bear in mind this took uh, almost two hours to figure out. And I ended up going back on the internet and doing some research, and I kind of came up with nothing. But it ended up being none of that. It was silly. It was this stupid little white jumper that they have on this setup. And uh, when I told you I had that working combination, where the only combination I found where it spun at a low amperage and quietly was in reverse. So what I had to do was I kept it in that in that wiring configuration, so it span in reverse. But what I did was I hooked the jumper up, I lifted my bike off the ground, so the rear wheel was off the ground, I hooked up my battery pack, 
and it stutters for a few seconds and then it spins forward in the right direction but you can't just disconnect the battery pack and get all scared like I did the first time what you have to do is once it starts spinning forward you have to disconnect this white jumper which was really hard to do with one hand with the bike in the air and spinning at full speed but once I disconnected that jumper it stayed spinning and forward so I then put the bike back down took the battery and unhooked it and I hooked the battery back in and now it's operating properly and forward it's kinda weird but uh, that's how this controller was set up this is sorta of like a forward to reverse switch but you only wanna hook it up while you're switching it to forward and reverse it's kinda weird but that's the way it worked well I'm getting the bike ready to go for a test ride and I put the kickstand on the bike the one that came with it because uh, as you know I broke my aluminum one trying to get this controller working properly well I'm not even a half mile away from my house and I already know this controller's fast let's take a look at the uh, the watts Man, it's so sunny out, you can't even see it. I'm in a bad spot. 37.3 amps. <laughs> that was just on a flat. It already went up to 31 miles an hour. Let's give you a little one-handed ride down here. See if we can open it up. I'm pretty uh, happy and impressed with the performance of the controller. I'm glad I bought a, a larger controller than everyone's saying, oh, why don't you buy a 20 amp controller? You run such small battery packs. The reason I like having this one is look at that 2,000 watt draw. When you need the power, you have the power. I mean, I might do uh, you know 20% 20 throttle most of the time, but when I need the power, it's there. That's a great draw. Only 0.8 amps out of the battery pack. 37.92 is the maximum amp draw so far. <laughs> this controller is awesome. Took a long time to get going, but man, was it worth it. I just got a 34 mile per hour max speed on pretty much f completely flat ground, maybe even a slight uphill. And uh, I just came up this entire hill as you can see all the way down to the bottom was where my house is it pulls 30 miles an hour up the whole hill I just went all the way up it it's pretty awesome So I just broke the 34 mile an hour record there. It went up to 35 or 36. And this is on a dead 15 cell pack, so I'm expecting to get maybe 37 or 38, maybe even 40 on some downhills once I put a fully charged 15 cell pack on the bike. I'm hoping I don't blow the controller up because I'm having fun on it right now. It's pretty awesome. After finishing a small ride here, we're at 56 volts, 2,066 watts, 39.15 amp max draw, 52.7 volts on that sag, 1.36 amp hours on the test. Nice little ride.